So a couple of hundred years ago, Isaac Newton, well, he postulated the theory of gravity. And what he wanted to do was try to find a mathematical function that would be able to link gravity with all mass. And Newton basically put forward a very important theory of the universe. And it was basically mainly to explain the 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 attraction between large objects. I'm talking about planets. And it explains how planets are held in orbit around the sun. And he postulated the theory that any any two things that have mass will have a force acting to bring them together. And that force is called the gravitational force. So me and the guy next to me will have a gravitational force between each other. Okay? Anything that has mass will have a gravitational force between each other. And what he saw was that the, the when there is, is a force between the two masses and you were to increase the masses of the two masses, you would find that the force increases also. And also, the force between the two masses are the same according to Newton's third law. So the force of big M acting on little m is equal to the force of little m acting on big M. In other words, the force between me, uh, the force of the sun, act, the force of the earth acting on me is equal to the force of me acting on the earth. It's the same according to Newton's third law. Now, what he then postulated as uh, seen by the idea of as you increase your mass, you increase the force of attraction between you, uh, y yourself, and the mass. You find out that the gravitational force is proportional to the product of the two masses. Okay? So as the two masses increases, then the force also increases proportionally to the product of the two masses. Okay. And the next idea was that related to the distance of their separation. What you'd find out is that as you bring to the two masses closer together, the gravitational force between them also increases. Okay? And that is, well, that is quite obvious if you're looking at every single other force. Talking about electrostatic, that is the same. Okay? What do you think? What he then found out was that the gravitational force is actually inversely proportional to the square of the distance of their separation. So remember, as you take these things closer together, the R decreases. And as the R decreases mathematically, inversely proportional gives a greater gravitational force. So if I were to increase if I were to half that distance, so that that distance becomes half r, then the gravitational force would decrease by a quarter. It's going to decrease by one fourth. Okay. So, as he now found out that the force is directly proportional to the product of their masses, and the force is inversely proportional to the square of their distance he was able to link together these two ideas so that the product of the masses it can be linked with the idea of the square of the separation in that there is now a constant that we have to consider that relates the force and these variables. So, he then introduced the gravitational constant, g, which is a very important, uh, very important constant in physics which is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newton meters squared to kilogram squared. And this g can, be, can replace this little constant that we are uh, temporarily relating these, these variables together with. And you'd find out that the gravitational force between any mass except up to the quantum level is equal to g 
multiplied by the product of their masses, mm, divided by the distance of their separation, r squared. That is a very important formula in physics. Okay? Now, let's look at a question. Calculate the gravitational force between the sun of mass, 2 times 10 to 30 kilograms, and Mars of mass, 6 times 10 to the 23 kilograms, separated by a distance of 2.3 times 10 to the 11 meters. So let's look at our very important formula, that is F equals GMM over R squared. And we were to sub these values in, and you get G multiplied by 2 times 10 to the 30, the mass of the sun, multiplied by 6 times 10 to the 23, the mass of Mars, divided by 2.3 times 10 to the 11 meters squared, which is the distance of their separation, you should get 1.51 times 10 to the 21 Newton. So that's the force between the Sun and Mars. Okay? Now what happens uh, to the gravitational force when we double the mass, each mass, we double each mass, and we triple the distance of their separation? Now we take out our very important formula, and we since we have doubled the mass of e we, we double the mass of each mass so we get 2m and 2m so it's g times 2m multiplied by 2m and we divide it by the three three times the distance of their separation so it's 3 r 3 r bracket squared so we then get g times 4 of the product of the masses divided by 9r squared. So the force is now equal to 4mm over 9r squared. So we can finally conclude that as you double each mass and triple the distance of their separation, the force is now 4 ninth of the initial force. Now let's end this video with a quick idea of well, if there is a gravitational force between two masses, well, why aren't people just sticking together? Why, why aren't me and you sticking together? Well, in truth, that force is so small between things with insignificant amount of masses relative to like large planets. I'm talking about me and you. We're weighing like 60 kilograms compared to the sun's weighing 2 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. So the force between me and you is so little to be considered as gravitational force. So in real life, we just neglect it.